welcome for worship as Martin Luther Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Hans. I'm glad you're here today. Today is All Saints Sunday, hence the white, the purity of the saints. Remember all the saints today. This is a very special day, the 1st of November. The day before, the end of October is Halloween, but it's really All Hallowed Eve, the Eve before all the saints on All Saints Day. This is the holy day. Now, yes, we had fun yesterday with the trunk or treat outside. You may have kids come to your house for trunk or treating, but today is the holy day, the religious day of it. We remember all the saints. I especially want to say a word that we remember those who passed away since last year's All Saints Sunday, especially Peg Reimer, Sandy Seidelman, and Deb McReynolds. We remember all the saints who went before us, our parents, our grandparents, maybe siblings and friends we may not have here on earth with us anymore. For they are watching from above in heaven. The joy of all the saints, we celebrate and remember them today. So let's join together now in worship, in remembering the saints and praising God. Join me in a confession. Holy God, creator of all that is, donor of grace and giver of life, hear our prayers of confession. There are chasms in our lives, deep valleys that separate us from one another and from you. We confess that we have allowed these rifts to grow for fear of being rejected when we reach out. You call us to a reconciled life, to healed relationships, to a wholeness with each other and with you. Mend us, we pray, and make us new creations. We need to be forgiven for our sin, for our mistakes, and for mistaking what the world values with what you value. Help us to be better, and to see more clearly, and to care more thoroughly. In Christ we pray. Amen. God, who is merciful and just, always hears our prayers. Chaos and uncertainty are never too powerful to block God from us. And so Christ came to the world fractured by sin and violence to bring forgiveness and new life. It is through the cross, the empty tomb, and the ascension that we have been redeemed, so that all of our sins are forgiven. In the name of God, the Creator, and the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share that peace with people either in your midst or on your computer screen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What's in Pastor's bag? Yeah, what's in Pastor's bag? What's in Pastor's bag? Yeah, what's in Pastor's bag? I don't know what's in there. What's in Pastor's bag? Good morning. I'm Pastor Hans. I'm co-pastor Wes. I'm Pastor Aria. That's how we do it, I guess. So welcome to Pastor's Bag for the Children's Sermon. So let's open this up and show Ari what's in it. Mm, what do you know. think's in there? Mm. Mm, mm. Maybe a picture? Yes. Oh, it's a picture. It's a picture. And a picture of? It was from my bedroom, Daddy. What's that from? My bedroom. That is in your bedroom. Okay. But that's of Aria's baptism. And who are the people there? Who are all those people? <laughs> Say some names. Who are they? Me, mm -hmm. Mom, Yaya, Daddy, Papa, Wes, Daddy. What? Who's that? Those are your godparents, Tim and Trisha. And who's that? Grandma that's girl. Grandma girl, that's right. So we have our grandparents, Uncle Andrew. Hey, yeah, yeah. And the godparents, that's right. We have all the people yeah. we love. Remember, I love this picture because it reminds us of a special day and it reminds us of them. You know, some of them live far away. None of them live here in the Kansas City area. So they all live on the East Coast and West Coast. And they live all over the country. And so they we don't get to see them every day, right? Mm -hmm. But this picture reminds us of them. We can remember them. So... When you want to remember somebody, it's helpful to have a picture, right? He is right. So what if what if you don't have a picture of someone? Is it easy to remember them? <gasps> what? Your brain. Your brain, your memory. Also so, known as a gray matter. So we are remembering, today is called All Saints Sunday, and we remember the saints who died, who were in heaven with Jesus. Because there's lots of saints, like my grandparents, I have one granny left, but the rest of my grandparents are in heaven with Jesus because they all passed away, but I can remember them and think about them. And that's what pictures are good for. It helps us to remember. But if yeah, we don't yeah, it's still in this world and Papa and They're all those still alive there, Aria. That's right. They're still alive. So we remember all the saints and pictures help us to remember. But if we don't have a picture, we can have our memory to remember with our memory. So let's pray. Ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you for all the saints. Thank you for all the saints. Those who love us. Those who love us. And those who are in heaven. And those who are in heaven. They still pray for us. They still pray for us. And watch over us. Watch over us. We love you, God. Love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our first reading today is from Revelation 5, verses 6 through 10. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, a lamb, standing as if it had been slaughtered, 
having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. The Lamb came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. When it had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God, saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34, 1 through 10. I will bless Yahweh always. Praise will continually be in my lips. My soul will boast about Yahweh. Let the oppressed hear it and be glad. Glorify Yahweh with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought Yahweh, who answered me, and freed me from all my fears. Those who look to Yahweh are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. The poor call out, and Yahweh heard, and saved them from all their troubles. The angel of Yahweh encamps around those who revere God and rescues them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happiness comes to those who take refuge in Yahweh. Holy people of God, revere Yahweh. For those who stand in awe of God, lack nothing. The young lion may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek Yahweh will lack no good thing. Our second reading is from 1 John 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love God has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know God. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When it comes to light, we will be like God. For we will see God as God really is. All who keep this hope keep themselves pure, just as Christ is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you 
falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We as Christians are called to pray for our country, the world, for our neighbors, for everyone. We as Christians are called to pray for our loved ones, neighbors, and friends. That's easy. But we are also called to pray for those who irritate us, those who disagree with us, those we dislike, and also those who would hate or persecute us. That's the challenge of being a Christian. We are called to pray for our elected officials, whether we voted for them or not, whether we like them or not. When President Trump went to the hospital for COVID, did you pray for him? Did you pray he get a quick, speedy recovery, or they go the other way? Well, that's a serious question today because the rift is so deep. The chasm in our political spectrum is so wide right now. The animosity and hate is so palpable. It's a scary time, but we are called to pray for one another. On top of all this division, we have foreign influence on the elections going on right now the threat of war and terrorism across the world, financial collapse, and a pandemic. This is 2020. This is the year we are living through. And through it, we are abiding and holding on by prayer. And so we as Christians are to pray for all, whether we like them or not, whether we agree with them or not, we are praying for everybody, especially during this tough time. But it's not enough just to pray for them. We also need to vote. This week is the election. It's kind of hard not to notice it, right? It's everywhere. Turn on the news, turn on the TV, it's everywhere. Drive down the street, see all the signs. I've seen a ton of them all throughout town. It's no accident that the sermon series on prayer came right before the election, and today is our last of the sermon series leading up right to the election itself. It's no accident. I passionately believe that we as Christians should be praying people. That we should be praying leading up to the election praying as we go to the ballot box and praying afterwards. When we go and vote, we should be people of prayer. Our election, this time, it's not enough just to go and cast your ballot and think you're done with it. No, we're not done with it. We as citizens need to be educated, informed, relied upon about what's going on in the world to be good voters, to be good civic people. We can't just cast our ballot and walk away. I really enjoy how people post pictures of their I voted sticker on their shirts or hats or jackets because it reminds us of our civic responsibility, our civic duty. Not only is it a freedom and pleasure to vote, it's a responsibility we have. And that responsibility doesn't just end at the election. Now, like many of us, I cannot wait for this election to be over. I am looking forward to it, in fact, for nothing else, just to see it, hopefully the animosity and hatred to go down all the slogans, all the horrible things going on, on social media. I can't wait for all that to end. But we all know that it doesn't really end, does it? No. Though the election may be over, these things continue on. They will continue. And as citizens, it's up to us to stay informed, to stay educated, to be well-read, to keep up on it. Our ballot and our civic duty doesn't end just on election day. It goes on 365 days a year. If you don't know that, then you may get summoned for jury duty. And guess what? That's also your civic duty. 
I just had that last week, by the way, and I was able to go and not get on a jury. So I would enjoy that. But our civic duty doesn't just end. It never really just ends. It's always with us. Same thing with prayer. Prayer does not happen just on Sunday and end on Sunday. Yes, we have prayer here at church, here for the service. We have prayer, of course. But our prayers don't end on Sunday because, well, that's the only day for prayer. No. Our prayers go all week, every single day. Our prayers need to go on and never cease. On a regular basis, we are to be praying. We should be people of prayer. This is one of the most passionate things I feel about as a pastor here that we've done. I'm saying to take such joy in as a congregation that we are a praying congregation. We lift up each other in prayer. We turn to one another. We look to each other. We lift each other up in prayer. Again, there's no action. This is the sermon series leading up to the election. For our series, we're going to talk about acts. A-C-T-S. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Say the S. Supplication. It's not really a common word. We don't really use the word supplication very often anymore. So you may be asking, what is supplication? Well, it's the earnest and intense begging and request that we make to God on behalf of others and ourselves. Supplication is an intense request, but it's intense and it's also humble. I thought that was really interesting. My definition actually in the dictionary included the word humble in that. It's intense, yet humble. We don't think those two words go together, but they do in supplication. How we go to God in prayer is intense and humble. Jesus gave us several parables about this, about the neighbor going to the neighbor in the middle of the night to pound on the door for food, earnestly, intensely, but yet with humility and humbly. We go to God in prayer during intense times, but we go with humility. Supplication is the prayer we lift up for each other and for ourselves. We have several prayer teams involved in the church. We have a prayer list that gets emailed out. We do these things because prayer is so vital to who we are as a people of God. If we're not praying, then what are we doing as a church? That's why I'm so passionate that we are a people of prayer for one another and for ourselves. It feels selfish sometimes to pray for ourselves, to lift up prayer requests. I'm not really good about this. I'm not oftentimes one to lift up prayer requests. But when I do, it's pretty serious because I'm thinking about it. I pray earnestly every day, but I don't often share my prayer requests with others. I just don't feel like I should be bothering other people with my prayer requests. And it's silly, right? Of course I should share my prayer requests for others. I'm not really bothering anybody, but I'm not good about sharing it. I'm not good about humbly going to tell people, hey, pray for this, pray for that. So-and-so is sick, or I'm sick, or my family is sick, or we're going through this tough time, or Wes has this thing in school, or just pray for me as pastor. One of the greatest joys I have is knowing and feeling that people are praying for me and my family because they pray for their pastor. So thank you so much for those who pray for us regularly. There's several saints in our church who pray for us every day, and I appreciate that. And so I pray for our church also every single day. This habit, this daily theme of prayer, again, it doesn't end on Sunday. It continues through the whole week. It shapes who we are. It shapes how we live. When it becomes a habit, it becomes part of our life. And when it becomes part of our life, guess what it makes us? It makes us into saints. Now, today is All Saints Sunday. We have the white on. We got the white decoration going on. All Saints Sunday is when we remember those loved ones who passed away who are in heaven now especially. But also, when we think about saints in the Lutheran Church, we are all saints. Because a saint in the Lutheran Church is simultaneously a saint and sinner. By grace, you have been saved and you're a saint. But we still sin and mess up. We're still a sinner. Hence, we need confession with our prayer. By praying regularly every single day, we become the saints. Now, the first reading today had this image of the saints in heaven, the 12 elders in the throne room of God. And they come before God with these bowls and chalices and these things, and they present them before God. And inside them, it's not wine, it's not a sacrifice, it's not meat, it's none of those things. It's prayers. I love this really bizarre image, this grand image of the throne room of God. And the saints in heaven, the elders in heaven, come and present our prayers before God and intercede for us. That's supplication in action. Now, we may think, oh, that's just in the book of Revelation, that's some image. No, we have in our creed. We believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. That one in the middle there, do you get the communion of saints? This is something we talk about in the creed every Sunday. 
This is when we talk about we lift up because all the saints in heaven, all the saints here on earth, lift up prayers for each other and one another. That's beautiful. That's the inspiration. That is our role model. For many times through the congregation, I've been so humbled and inspired by the people who pray so passionately and regularly. It inspires me to pray more, knowing that they're praying. I want to join with them in their prayers. And here's the beautiful thing about this. When we do this regularly, intercede for ourselves and others, when we lift up the prayers to God, it changes us. It makes us into these saints. And that's what we need right now. We need these great saints who are lifting up prayers. Through all the division politically, we can be the saints to bring prayers for reconciliation. Through all the conflict and strife and name-calling, we get to be the saints to pray and lift each other up, not tear people down. Through all the anxiety and fear, we get to be the saints and pray for one another to lift each other up, to encourage one another, to not be afraid, but to be trusting in God and God's goodness. Through all the fear and anxiety of the election, with the economy, with everything going on, we get to be the saints. We get to lift up the prayers. I think back on my life of all those great people who were lifting up prayers, and it humbles me. It makes me so thankful for them. That's the kind of person I want to be, and I strive to be. And by praying every day for each other, for our country, our neighbor, for our politics, for our vote, for everything, we become those saints we want to be. The people of God to bring peace and good news to all. We get to be the saints to lift up the prayer. Let us continue lifting up prayers now. Amen. On the wings of a snow white dove, he sends his He sent him his love
Join me in declaring our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel time and again. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, states blue and red, rural, urban, suburban, young and old, as we share in another national election, kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your Son's blessings come to those living in poverty, in grief, in hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer and hurt. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of your synod. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, Countless are the multitude you have called by name and gathered to yourself. We remember especially Peg Rummer, Deb McReynolds, and Sandy Seidelman. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord until the day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever. Amen.
join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Almighty God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship as Martin Luther Lutheran Church. We are the church together. A few announcements for you today. This already come up. We celebrate the Drop, Grab, and Go, the first of its kind we've had here. You can come by Saturday between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. You can drop off gifts, clothing items, especially for teenage boys we need, for the Metro Lutheran Ministry and Lee Summit Social Services Christmas stores. We have some volunteers who are making homemade soup and chili, so you can grab the chili or soup on your way to go, too. And any financial gift would be greatly appreciated. You can mark them down is for the Christmas store or drop, grab, and go. That's again Saturday between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Sunday, coming up next week, November 8th, we'll be having worship in the sanctuary again. So we have two services, 8.45 a.m. for the organ service and 10 a.m. with the band. This will be a little bit different. We have seating. We've kind of marked off the sanctuary spaces for social distancing. We require everyone to wear a mask for the entire service. We appreciate people coming in to use the hand sanitizer, wear the mask, to be distant so we can worship together inside. Let's go and continue to pray and lift each other up and think of the saints this week. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Peter.